Hello, it's Crafty Carol here with yet another little video for you. And this time I wanted to show you one of our wonderful Stamping Up kits. They are brilliant They're because everything is included and you can make loads of cards or other things. <laughs> There's various other kits and you can see the full kit collection. Go to my website, craftycarolscards.co.uk and you'll see a link to see the uh, kit collection on the home page. So um, this one I want to talk to you about is called Cozy and Bright. It's new for this Christmas series and um, it comes in a beautiful box all um, wrapped up. And in the box, you'll find everything you need, in this case, to make 12 cards. Each kit makes different things, but this makes 12 cards. These ones are 12 of all the same cards, if you wanted to make that. But I want to show you that there's a lot more you can do with this kit. So. Um, this is what you get in the box. You get the set of instructions and then you get all the things you need in order to make those cards. So you get um, a wrapped plastic packet and it's got the envelopes in. So um, envelopes, they look like that. And maybe you've got the card bases, which are like that. I'll show you again in a minute. Cards of cutouts of the bits you want to stick on and then all sorts of other bits. You get a little stamping spot, Poppy Parade. Uh, you get a set of... Um, Oop, here we go. We get a set of um, stamps and they've got a whole range of things on them. They've got celebrate the season and um, all is cozy and bright. May this holiday warm your heart. Wishing you a Merry Christmas. Two more on this side. Um, orange you glad. <laughs> oh dear. Or orange you glad it's Christmas. Don't think I'd use that one. Uh, happy Christmas and a joyous new year. Um, my personal favourites would be the either just wishing you a Merry Christmas or Happy Christmas uh, and a joyous New Year. Either of those would be good. I think I'll probably use wishing you a Merry Christmas. It comes with a block, so you get a free block. Um, you also get dimensionals, you get um, twine, everything you need to make the projects. So let's look at the cards that you actually make with this one, um, which means we can follow the instructions. So the instruction sheets are beautifully put together. So they tell you for the card, and um, when there's more than one card in the kit, you get instructions for each one. Um, so this one is all the same cards. So you need the card base. It tells you which of the other elements you need, that you need dimensionals, you need the stamping blocks, all of the bits you need to bring out. And then page two, it tells you exactly what to do. So you stamp your sentiment onto, let me show you these bits. Um, you get these 12 of these um, where you just stamp onto these push out bits which is nice um, so I shall do that in a minute and show you and then how to put the card together with all the elements how you put it together all in numbered um, instructions so stamp it then stick your first bit on then stick the second bit on and here it shows you how to use dimensionals and how to put them on you know it's so detailed then for this bit, you're going to add the stick, the cinnamon stick um, with twine wrapped around. So it tells you how much twine to use. Wrap it around, turn it into a bow. Dimensionals, put that on. Add the sentiment on step five. And again, it shows you where to put dimensionals so that it fits properly on there. And I'll show you when I put this together. Uh, and finally, if you want to put some of the other elements, these two um, two little, I don't know what, are they cinnamon pods or something? Whatever. And um, the cinnamon sort of cross section. Put those on as well so let me show you how you put that card together so first of all you need all your bits for it so we're going to follow just as with step one we're going to do the stamping and um, i'm actually going to use i think i'll use wishing you a merry christmas so and peel the stamp from the backing of course these stamps are for you to keep I forgot to get the block out so i'll just use one of my old blocks um, and then the stamping i'll use this little thing the only difficulty with these I find is actually opening them in the first place there is a there we go now don't poke myself with the with the prodder that'd be silly um, there is a dotted line that you can move along just to be able to open it so <laughs> with a little bit of tearing at the end that bit hasn't opened Urgh. This is, I, you know, this is the hardest bit, is opening the stamp pad. There we go. So I've opened the ink pad. You can see how new it was. So all I'm going to do is dab it on the stamp. Obviously, uh, with these tiny ones, you've got to take the stamp to the, 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 the ink pad to the stamp. Normally, I would take the um, stamp to the ink pad. So I've inked up my um, sentiment. And then I'm just going to, by eye, because I see through, pop it in the middle of um, my 
these push out or pushed out so you can see it push out sentiment strips all ready cut and ready for you so there is my sentiment done that was step one so step two in the instructions put those to one side now is then to start assembling the card so always refer back to the instructions so if we go back to that page i've done step one I've stamped my sentiments, that's now ready. Step two, I need uh, the, the small orange. So this is my small orange here, orange segment. So these are stick on, so I can just peel that off. And I know it's stick on because it hasn't given me any glue to do it. So I know it's a stick on and it's suggested, let's just have one card at a time, here we go. It's suggested I put it on around here. So I'm gonna check against my um, guide here and stick it on exactly where I need it to be. So that was step two. Step three, I'm going to add the big orange and this needs dimensionals on the back. So here's my big orange. So this, you see, it hasn't got any sticky on the back. It just has push out. So I can pull that off, get my dimensionals. You get a full set of dimensionals with this kit. It suggests using three on the back. I probably would on something this big. I don't always use as many as they suggest. I'm a little bit mean with dimensionals, which is ridiculous the number I get through. So I can pull that off. Thank you, Gus. We don't need your support. And uh, it shows me again in the instructions where they want me to place it. So overlapping that orange and just down to the bottom of these leaves. So I would go there and that sticks that on there. So then step four, they want me to cut, it says here, 12 inches of twine, and then I'm going to tie it around the cinnamon bunch thing, which is this one. So if I get that out, so the extra away, because I don't need that now, and then get my twine. So I look at me, I've got ink all over my fingers and I've hardly started. Anyway, never mind. I always get ink everywhere. I'm a messy crafter, what can I say? Right. So here's the twine and I just need to unwrap 12 inches, which I'll just measure on my ruler here, which is that. So I can slip that off, put the twine away for the next bit. And it suggests I tie around, this 12 inches looks quite a lot actually, just to tie a little bow around here, but that's fine. I can, what I'll do is pull it through because I don't need that much, I don't think. <laughs> then I could use two lots. Right, so. I'm going to wrap it around. I might actually wrap it around twice. Gus, lie down, please. You are a noisy dog. Just because I've got plenty of twine, so I can do that. Oops. If I don't get my fingers in a right mess here. What, where am I wrapping that? Dearie me. Right. So wrap round, and then I'm going to tie a single knot. You see, I've cut obviously too much here. So 12 inches, probably too much. I think I've probably cut about eight. <laughs> But there we go. There's plenty of twine you can do it. They they will have measured it so that there will be enough to do 12 cards cutting 12 inches of twine. So then tie a bow, which of course I can't do because I'm doing it on camera, which I can I can never tie bows on camera. There we go. Pull it through and then I can adjust it to whatever size I want because I don't want a loop that big. Thank you very much. That looks fine. So just adjust it there so I've got my bow and then I can trim off my excess that I don't need there like that so there I have oh I've done it upside down haven't I they've done it that way around I've done it this way around I don't think it matters too much I suppose sticking it on it does go better that way so I might just try and turn my bow over there we go I don't want an upside down bow. There we go, that's all right. So then again, I look at my instructions and it tells me where I need to put dimensionals. So I need two dimensionals on the back of this, one near the top of there and the other one there, because obviously this bit is going across the orange, so we don't want to have any depth there. So again, I can peel off the back of those and <laughs> They never go in the bin and then place that again using the picture to make sure i got it roughly in the right place so they suggest about there which is fine then the next step following this i'm going to put the sentiment on and just put two dimensionals at the far end of the sentiment so that's this end so i need a couple of dimensionals on there 
quite close together. There we go. And then again, I can use the picture to work out exactly where to put this so it comes across. I'm going to put it slightly behind my um, bow, I think. There, I'm going to put it there. That's... I'm not sure I understand. Oh, <laughs> my watch is now talking to me. Sorry about that. Right, so I put the sentiments on. And then finally, I'm going to use two of these little sticky ones. If I can find them, where did I put them? Here we go. So these again, they're on the backing, so they're sticky. And again, I'm going to use the instructions to help me go where it is. So putting one just behind there, that's there. And the other one is going just behind that orange there. And there we have the card. We already have the envelope prepared, wherever I've put it, there we go. So the envelopes come already prepared with the um, image on it, which is lovely. So I have my envelope ready and all I need to do now is fold my card. And I have my card ready. Now, personally, I will always stamp something on the inside as well. So wishing you a Merry Christmas in the set of stamps, which I've already lost. Honestly, did I put them back in the box on my sort of... Just have a quick look. No, I seem to have lost the stamps completely already. No, oh, here they are. There we go. So I'll probably use one of these in the middle as well. So I've used Wishing You a Merry Christmas here. So I'm going to use my other favourite one, Happy Christmas um, and a Joyous New Year. So I shall use this one. Peel that off there. Stick it on my block. And again, I use my little mini pad that I've got that coordination between the front and the back. Just a little thing, using the mini pads, by the way, I do find the lid of them just can get in the way a little bit. Now, you could take it off completely. That's one option because it will peel off. It just needs to tear along the back. Um, my personal option is to hold it and just keep my fingers over the lid so I can use the ink pad um, absolutely fine. Um, but I'm just keeping the lid out of the way. That's up to you. So ink that so I'm going to stick that as the sentiment in the middle so we'll have it here happy Christmas and a joyous new year and that is my completed card so the kit contains enough for 12 cards so you can uh, make them like that but you can also play around with kits you don't have to make the kit as you want if you don't want to so that is using it um, for the kit my second idea was I'm um, actually to me I'm not that excited about the oranges, to be honest. Um, don't always see oranges as particularly Christmassy. So instead, why not use something else you might have around? So I have in my stash this glorious, uh, what is it, Bows of Holly DSP. And this is beautiful DSP, gorgeous uh, different designs. So two-sided again, so you've got beautiful sort of ferny backgroundy one with red, red dots with poinsettias on the front, green stripes with holly leaves and all sorts there, uh, two sheets of each obviously, then a green background with trees on the front, I'll definitely be using that one, um, a sort of spotty crumb cake background which is rather nice with poinsettias on the front, and I could have used those and I might do on another card, large poinsettias with a red background or the small sheet again which is what I've used and what I've done is that I actually, <laughs> that wasn't a ding, that was me hitting my light. Right, what I've done is actually cut out some bits from that poinsettia sheet. So I've got all sorts of different poinsettias and I'm going to build those into here and use a sentiment. So I'm going to use the same sentiment as before. Um, get it just off my book there. So I'm going to use my uh, Merry Christmas. Uh, wishing you a Merry Christmas. So again, I'm going to use the um, little sheets of sentiment. I might as well use those because they're there. Saves me cutting out something else, but you can always cut out and use a different sentiment strip shape if you wanted. So I'm just going to ink that up again. And again, center it. Wishing you a Merry Christmas on my sentiment strip. So there's my sentiment ready, which I can just pop out because it's already die cut through. Um, sometimes when I'm being particularly OCD, where the little bits are where it's fitted to the um, 
there. You just might want to nip those off. It's up to you. Sometimes I'm a bit OCD about that. There we go. That's a little bit better. So I've already got that. So all I want to do now is arrange my um, poinsettias around it. And you'll just see I get a slightly different look. So again, I'm going to use my... <laughs> losing everything today. Right. Yeah, my dimensionals. So I don't know which order should we have these in. I want that one. Obviously, it's cut off just behind there. That's quite a big one. So I think we'll have one just stuck. So I'll just use some glue to stick that one flat. So all I've done is fussy cut these in a very sort of ordinary way, really. I haven't done much with them. These I'm going to have some dimensionals on. So I'll have one there, one in the middle here. And I might put just a second one on that, actually. So let's put this one, say, up here. This one I'm going to put over here. And I, you can see I'm just sort of wrapping them around each other. Then I'm going to put dimensionals behind my sentiment, like before. going to have this over here. Of course I could put this anywhere I wanted but actually I've, because I've got the leaves sticking up. I'm going to put this one here. I might cut out yet another. I might cut out another one and put it there actually because I probably want that. And for this one I'm going to stick it. So I'm going to use glue. Just a little bit of loose glue glue, because I'm going to have that one sticking up there like that. So you can see that just gives me a very different look. So I've got the one made from the kit. And this one again, I would do it. I will cut out one more actually to stick up there, I think. So let me show you what I do with that. You might as well see this too. So what I'm gonna do is decide which one I want. I think we'll have this one here. So I'm gonna cut around it lo loosely and then I can cut more into shape as I get it out. That cuts it out of my sheet. I might leave both of those on, we'll see. And then I'm just going to cut very, very loosely around the leaves because it's a red background. It's not, I don't need to be that accurate. There we go. And I think, yes, we'll stick that on with a dimensional. So that just fills in up to that leaf there. That looks better. So just another idea as you can do. So you could use anything. You could use um, a stamped image. I've got um, a lovely, uh, you can see we've already got fur cones here. And one of the stamp sets I've got has some fur cones and things. And I might do one of those as well. So play about, have a think about what's in the kit and just think what else you've got in your stash that you could put together to make um, just a different type of card. So they don't need to be all the same. But if you want to, dead simple and dead quick to do them all the same if you want. Thanks for joining me today. Please do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and do visit my website where you can find more about me and more about the classes I do. All the information should be on the website. Get in touch if there's anything else you want to know. Thanks for joining me today. Bye.